So what are practical uses of autonomous business office? Uh, well, how many times does a simple scheduling of an appointment turn into a series of phone or email tag? In our IT support business, we found that we were spending a large amount of time and effort just trying to connect with our clients to resolve their issues, leading to wasted time, slower resolution, and frustration on both ends. I've seen this same impact when, when I've been trying to schedule quarterly meetings with my clients, but the technology exists to improve the experience. In fact, Microsoft Bookings is part of Office 365 uh, suite and, and that we can that can simplify how customers schedule and automate the management of uh, appointments. You know, the systems dynamically provide your clients a view of available times that meet the criteria that you've defined. You know, it streamlines the scheduling and allows you to provide your clients uh, with a sense of control. So we're going to take uh, a look at Microsoft Bookings here. Uh, you know, basically look at how it works. There's, um, you know, there's several pieces to it. We can dig into really kind of a, a training scenario uh, if you have interest in that. But I want to just kind of introduce it to you here and walk through uh, how we can use the booking site. So I'll bring up a demo booking site that I've created here. And uh, again, this is part of the Office 365 um, business suite. And uh, we're, we've got some menu choices over here. We're gonna start at the bottom and work our way up. This is the default of what I get when I create a, uh, a booking site. And so nothing's really configured here at this point. And I do this all through uh, my Office 365 by going to office.com and, uh, and setting this up. So the business information is, uh, is what I put in when I create this site. So I had to give it a, a business name, which I'm calling it booking, Bookings Demo. And then the uh, other information I put in here is what type of business it is. And I just put this in as a demo, demo consulting. Um, that's really the only thing that I uh, provided to, for it to create the site and then get me to where I am right now. So I can come in here and I can add uh, my business address, my business phone number. So we'll do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero. That's a, don't call that number. I'm, I'm not sure what you'll get. Uh, and then of course, since I'm doing this through my Office 365 account, it grabbed my email address and put that in there. If I have URLs for like my website or, um, or policies, terms and conditions, then I can add those there as well. If I use some other type of currency other than US dollars, then you know I've got a list here of, of currencies that I can use. And then of course down here at the bottom, I can add a business logo. So I simply just click on change. I'm gonna go out here and look for a business logo. There's one called demo. And uh, I'm gonna change the little background. So having these little blue lines here, I'm gonna go ahead and make those gold to match my logo save and now this is putting the logo on the page for me so whatever your company logo you can add that in there then uh, i can set up my business hours this is kind of the the 30, foot view of of when services are available and and when i work i can change these you can see the drop down list i can uh, make these whatever time i want i can add uh, more time. So this could be from 8 to 1 that I, or 8 to 11 that I set here, and maybe 12 to 5 that I set here so that uh, we're not open during lunch. If I don't want to do that on each day, then I can just delete that. If I want to work on Saturdays or Sundays, I can add those here as well. Once I've configured those, I'll simply save that and we'll move to the services. So the services are what people are going to be able to book through this booking site. Uh, and, and what is the booking site? It's gonna be a website that customers or clients can use to go see, see different services, select a service and, and book an appointment with me. 
So the default one here, we're just going to go in and take a look at this first one. Uh, I've named it Initial Consult, so I put that in. I can I can put a uh, description of that here if I want. Uh, this is a free meeting, so maybe that's maybe you want to say what you're doing with this uh, uh, this visit. Default location, you can add a location, or I'm just going to say client's office. Whoops. There we go. And uh, uh, I can add online meetings. So if I have Teams, for example, I can turn this on and it'll add a, a Teams meeting link in the meeting so that we can do this online instead of at the client's office. Default duration, uh, so it defaults to an hour. Uh, in the in this meeting, I'm going to go ahead and set it to 30 minutes. And these are interesting settings here. So, for example, uh, buffer time. I'd like to set a buffer time of let's say 30 minutes before the meeting, and about 30 minutes after. Why did I do that? Well, because I may have to drive you know, to the client's office and I may need 30 minutes to get there. After the meeting, I may want some time to follow up on a couple of things before I get too far away from the meeting. I'm going to let the customer manage the, their own booking. So they can book it. If they need to cancel, they can cancel it. If they need to change the time, they can change the time. The uh, default price is not set. This is this one is free, so I'm going to mark it as free. If I had a price, I could set that up. Internal notes. This is really for uh, for the staff who are going to get booked for this service to know what's going on here. Uh, maybe it's telling them uh, a link to a process to follow. Uh, custom fields. I could add custom fields for the client to uh, to fill in as their uh, booking the appointment and then of course uh, reminders so you know I could say a one week reminder so I'm going to get a reminder email one week before or an hour before I'm going to choose one day and I'm going to have it go to all attendees of the meeting and then if there are things that I want to be sent um, then in the or topics that I want to mention in the reminder to the uh, attendees, I can add that here and it's part of the email that goes out to them. And of course, additional information on the email confirmation, if I want to send out some links to some documents whenever I confirm that they've been booked for an appointment, then I can include that in here as well. Um, we have the ability to, to confirm with them over text messages. And of course, we're going to show this service on the booking page. Maybe I'm just working on it, so I turn that off so that it's not doesn't actually show up. Um, and then here is use the default scheduling policy, which that was the business policy that I have set up here. Um, we're going to go ahead and set a scheduling policy for this service. So time increments. Well, we decided that this meeting is 30 minutes. So we're going to go with 30 minutes for the meeting. And then uh, lead time. This is how much time I need the appointment to be booked ahead of time. So it defaults to 24 hours. So I want to know a day before. Um, so in other words, if you try to go to this site and book a meeting for this afternoon uh, in another hour or two, uh, it's not going to show any available times. So I'm going to set this for 24 hours to get a day advance. This is a maximum lead time, which is set to 365 so you could book an appointment a year away and I don't want that to happen so I'm going to set this to 30 days so uh, it's only going to show you dates that are available in the next 30 days email notifications so obviously we want people to be notified when they create the booking I want to send an invite to the customer so it actually is an invite that goes on their calendar and if I have multiple staff that are going to be part of this um, service, I can allow the customer to choose which staff they want to meet with. I'm just going to be the only staff, so I'm going to leave it there. And then, of course, the general availability, you have some, some choices here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and go with uh, bookable when staff are free.
So that's the information that I've put in here for the service. I save that service and now I go to staff uh, and we're almost through here. So this is going to be staff that I'm going to set up and uh, I'm going to have their phone number uh, for the staff put in there. Maybe I don't want to be pink. Maybe I want to match the, the logo here in the maroon. Uh, the events on Office 365 calendar affect availability. So if I have a calendar event on my, on my calendar, then when Bookings is looking at my calendar, it's not going to see that time as being available. It won't overbook me or double book me. Right here it says use business hours. So it's reading the default business hours that we configured a while ago, but maybe I don't want to always be available uh, for this particular service because I have other things I need to do. Maybe Mondays are not good, so I'm gonna take that day off uh, from this. And maybe on Tuesdays, I only want to do it in the morning from eight to 11. And then Wednesday afternoons uh, sound good. So I'm going to be bookable here for this from one o'clock till five. Thursdays are good all day. And of course, uh, Fridays, oh yeah, let's go ahead and do Fridays till noon. Nobody wants to have to go to a, a, a meeting Friday afternoon, right? All right, so I've, I've set these times. This is for me. Now, if there's a different staff person, they can set different times as well and, and bookings will be checking their time frames for this service. So I'll save this. Customers, this is a, this will collect your customers as they book with you, or you can import your customers and populate it here. So let's go to the booking page now. So this is actually the, the link, the URL to the page uh, that'll be published that, that we'll send to our clients and they'll be able to see. I'll show it to you here in just a minute. But there are some settings that we may want to do. So require an Office 365 account. Uh, we're not going to check that if we want somebody who is out, outside of my organization to be able to uh, book me, which we're setting this up for clients. So we'll leave that unmarked. Disable direct search engine. I don't want search engines uh, uh, indexing my booking page here. If I have a personal data uh, collection uh, consent policy, then I can include that here. Scheduling policy, again, uh, I can go to this booking page and, uh, and allow this, but I've already set those policies for the, uh, the service and, and the staff here. So I'm just going to leave these at default because this affects everything on the page. And then, of course, email notifications, already set that as part of the service. Um, uh, and, and so you can see all of these are, are a higher level global setting. And I was specific in the service that we set. All right, so let's uh, take a look at how we're gonna, what we're going to make the booking page look like. I like this maroon, so I'm gonna change the uh, color theme to that maroon. And uh, I'm gonna display the business logo. We'll leave the time zones the way they are. I'm gonna save this and publish it. And uh, then I'm going to open the published page. So let's see what we did. So here is the, the bookings page. So I would simply just send this link to clients when I would want to uh, provide them, or maybe it's a link that's on my website that they can click on to, to book meetings. If I hover over the information here, I can see uh, details that I typed in. You know, this is initial consult. This is a free meeting. I already covered that. You'll notice here that everything in February is grayed out. There's no service area because Today's the 28th. I said we have to have at least a day uh, worth of uh, lead time there, 24 hours. So let's go look at next month. And here you see the 5th is the first day available and you can see all the times that are available on the 5th. So let's go ahead and grab uh, an 8.30 appointment. So I'm doing this as, as a client now. I've selected 8.30. I can come in here and put my name in. Let's put my 
email address in here. Phone number, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine. All right, address is optional, so I'm not gonna worry about that. Put in the notes, test note. All right, so I've put in all that information as a client. Uh, I can now hit book, and it's now booking that appointment. Now, where I'm getting this information up here about available times is it's actually looking at my uh, my Office 365 calendar and, and using those parameters that I set to make sure that uh, the, the appointment can book in the, uh, the correct time. So I needed a 30 minute uh, buffer up front, a 30 minute for the meeting and a 30 minute after so it actually looked for a time on my calendar that was an hour and a half. So I get a confirmation email sent to me. So let's just bring that up here. And so here's what the confirmation email looks like. So the meeting's from 8.30 to 9 on March the 5th. And uh, if, I'm, if I'm the client, then I have the capability to go in uh, and I can see you know, here to reschedule, cancel, uh, or make another booking if I want. Now, back on the booking side, if I go into my bookings calendar, it doesn't show me items that are on my Office 365 calendar. This is just items that have been booked through booking. So if I go to March the 5th, there's the appointment. I can click on this, take a look at it, uh, see the information that is there. So that is, that's basically how bookings uh, works for us and allows us to be able to streamline that uh, the coordinating a, a booking.